Well, right from day one, Kids Aloud has always um, had a vision that children learn through play. Not because we made this up, but because we researched widely before we opened the doors to Kids Aloud to look at best practice out there. And we passionately believe, and we believe the evidence shows, that children of this young age learn best through play. But I also reflect over the years that I've ran Kids Aloud that it's probably the most misunderstood um, thing that we do. Many parents, in fact it's probably not fair to say many, but some parents just don't understand um, that children really do learn a lot through play. And we often get asked about more formal learning, sitting down and making children write, um, having more structure to the day to make sure that more formal learning is going on. And we know, we absolutely know this isn't the right thing for children of this age but we clearly need to do better at getting that message across. So it's the time of year when lots of children are leaving for school. In fact, this year we have 181 um, graduates of Kids Aloud. And what we've decided to do for the very first time, and we've been able to do this because of the launch of the tracker booklet that we uh, did the video blog about last time, to have a cold, hard look at the outcomes, the learning outcomes of the children that leave Kids Aloud to go to school. Um, and what we're going to do is make sure that we're absolutely transparent and share that information on an ongoing basis and I have to be fair we're absolutely delighted with the um, outcomes the children are making at Kids Aloud and I'm hoping the combination of the video blog, the combination of the analysis of this information that we're going to share with parents will hopefully really start to help parents understand just how effective learning through play is. Well, learning through play is children having the opportunities to decide how they want to spend their day and that that's done in an environment that encourages them to interact with that environment and learn through the day-to-day -day fun that they're having at Kids Aloud. And our job as skilled practitioners is to observe children's interests, to scaffold the learning so that when we see that they're interested in something, we can roll with that in the moment and we can ask them open questions that might encourage them to, to take more and extend the learning from the natural interests and over time we feel we've got really good at this and certainly at our last um, inspection by Ofsted um, they absolutely loved the fact that we were planning in the moment so ch seeing children's interests in the right here right now and extending those learning opportunities with our interactions it is interesting because we've absolutely minimized the paperwork we do very very little paperwork now because we consider that the the child is the evidence of how well or not this is working um, but I think I've commented in, uh, on an earlier video that although one Ofsted inspector loved it, um, another could walk through the door and absolutely hate it. So obviously that nervousness, but we've said before, it's not about Ofsted. The children have got to be at the centre of what we do. And we honestly believe that this sort of learning through play is really what creates the fantastic outcomes. And it is misunderstood. You know, it's actually called, um, often referred to as free play. And I think it doesn't do it justice, although we've never come up with a better word, because it's much more than children just mucking about. And certainly sometimes we actually have parents use that language, the, the kids are just mucking about. And it just doesn't reflect what's going on. There's so much more to it than that. And I think it is our job to start to help parents understand what's going on when the children are spending time with us. The primary purpose that Kids Aloud is making children happy because we know that happy children are ready to learn. They're little sponges and once they're happy it's all ready to go. So what we're trying to ensure is that we're creating an environment where they feel safe, where they feel secure, where their confidence can grow, where they can become resilient so that they can try things again and again until they can do things. And those skills are just so, so important for their future lifelong learning. And, you know, occasionally we put under pressure to hothouse children and to have them sat down and it's just not the way it should be. It's not just not the kids allowed way, but the research shows that children of this young age, it's not the way to foster lifelong learning. And in fact, if you're not careful, can do the very opposite. So not only are Ofsted clear that children should be learning through play, but lots and lots of research out there is as well. So we feel it all ties together. Our primary purpose is clear. The way that we do things is clear. And we know that on the whole, the parents are absolutely behind our, our approach. And we also 
know it's effective and I think that's really exciting. And in fact we have um, a parent from the continent because you may not know but in the continent children go to school a lot later and start formal education a lot later. And this parent said, Jenny I don't want my child to go to school, I'd like them to stay an extra year at Kids Allowed. And we're allowed to do that and that's what that parent did. And what's really nice to see is that that child is now leaving school kids allowed not to go to reception class but to go to year one and having spent that extra year at kids allowed has attained every single one of the early learning goals and that child's had a great fun year doing so without that formal or the more formal education of reception class so it shows how effective it can be. So if we look at the sand areas at Kids Allowed, you may look and see children playing in the sand and think that's all that's going on, but actually there's so many opportunities to learn when children are playing in the sand. So first of all, let's think about the texture of the sand and the language of explaining that texture. So when we ask children how it feels, they start to think about how to describe things and they're learning lots and lots of vocabulary. Think about the fact that they're in that sand with other children, they may be having to take turns, is it their turn to do the sand castle, is it their turn to have the sand bucket, those sort of things. So they're learning those social skills. Look at the um, physical skills they're learning when they're making sand castles and they fill in the bucket and they're using their dexterity to do that. Think about shapes and measures and counting sand castles. There's just so much opportunity for learning going on just in that one small example. And you take um, the sand area, well there are 14 different areas of learning in a Kids Allow preschool and all of those areas are creating just as many opportunities opportunities to learn through play and it's the skill of the practitioner that helps the child really um, get that effective learning through the fun that they're having. You know, I think it's a really fair question to ask us, is our approach working? And for the first time ever, we've actually took some time out to have a cold, hard look at that question. Um, and the way that we've done that is that the government has got a document called Development Matters, and that clearly identifies the areas and the progress that children should be making at different milestones. And what we've done is we've looked at the 181 children that are leaving for school this year, and literally, for every child, we have looked at their outcomes against this document and we're absolutely delighted because not only are by far the majority actually attaining the outcomes for their age group many in fact over 30 percent are not just attaining for their own age group but for the next age group as well and some of the children are actually leaving for school having attained the entire early learning goal and they've got a whole of the year to do that yet so you know this effective um, implementation if you like and our vision of learning through play is working really really well and we're going to share that information we're going to put it on the website so that parents can look at it won't be personalized to a child obviously it's summarized so that it protects the confidentiality but what it clearly evidences is that it is effective and I really really feel that parents will absolutely get behind what we're doing and those that are maybe not convinced that learning through play is the way to go for young children I'm really hoping that this evidence gives them the confidence to say, yeah, the children are having a whale of a time at Kids Allowed, they are happy, but not only that, they're attaining really well as well. I have to be totally honest and say no. Um, I was one of those parents that didn't understand learning through play and I probably would have looked and thought, what are they doing? They're just mucking about. So, the pennies really dropped for me when we've researched um, how children learn effectively at this age group. And I actually do look back and cringe a little bit. I have two older children, one's 15 and one's 11, and we now have a younger child as well that's two. And I was that hot housing parent. I don't look back and be proud of it, but I was one of those parents. Um, I bought the workbooks from Marks and Spencers and I sat my poor three-year-old child at the kitchen table and said, come on, let's do this. And it's just not the way to go with children. I had flashcards at home. How boring. There's so much better ways to help children get excited about colours and shapes and words. What I do now with Olivia, because I know, because I've done the research and I actually get it and the pennies dropped, is that we just have a really language-rich environment. We talk all the time. When I'm making a bottle, we count the scoops of milk. When we're walking upstairs to bed, we count the steps. And she loves doing it and we're doing it and having fun. You know, when we're looking at colours, we go on a colour hunt in the house and, you know, we look at the yellow duck in the bath and then we go and have a look at things in the house that are the same colour. 
isn't that much more fun than you know looking at a flashcard of yellow and red and green and don't get me wrong I'm not constantly you know thinking of ways to educate Olivia but what I'm saying is that there's just some really really fun ways get your children involved in the shopping you know when you're buying your fruit and veg ask them to go and get you the carrots get you the apples find you the red apple find you the green apple that's so much more fun than sitting there with workbooks from Marks and Spencers and flashcards. So uh, no, I look back and cringe and I do feel I'm a better parent with that bit of knowledge that, you know, very young children learn through their own interests and through having fun. Um, so if there's one key message I could get across really, it would be that, you know, look into it yourself, convince yourselves, but look at our outcomes as well. And hopefully the combination of all that will make you realise that children learn best through play.